for the past year, there's been a lot of talk about TSMC construction in Arizona and how it's being held up by labor and environmental disputes and all the red tape in the CHIPS Act and how basically American bureaucracy is getting in the way of the project actually getting off the ground. The Economist wrote about it recently. The Wall Street Journal has weighed in. The New York Times, Bloomberg wrote about it last year. And then last week, there was a report from Data Center Dynamics that said three months after TSMC announced further delays at its fir- at its $40 billion Arizona fabs, the chip manufacturer has now said the plant is expected to be operating at full capacity by the end of the year. The announcement comes several weeks after it was first reported that TSMC is set to be awarded more than $5 billion in federal grants under the U.S. Chips and Science Act. So, Ben, I'm still not entirely clear what processes are ahead of schedule, and TSMC is going to hold a press conference in mid-April to provide more specifics in that regard. But I'm mainly just flagging it as another myth that might be busted, and some of the pessimism from TSMC might have been something of a negotiating tactic as they tried to actually secure this funding and get things rolling. So I found it interesting. Well, if I could make it about myself once again. Um, I think Please one do. way to read trajectory, not always, I don't want to oversell this. There is a dog didn't bark sort of aspect. I haven't written about this particular issue uh, in a while because there, I have wondered if there is some degree of overblownness happening here. And part mm-hmm. of the dynamics is a, a Taiwanese dynamic, which is TSMC is in this very interesting strategic position. I think interesting is is one word that you can use which is you have it's obviously a massive astronomical part of the Taiwanese economy number 1 mm-hmm. number 2 there is this you know the silicon shield sort of concept where uh yes we're all you know we Americans are all happy that you know Taiwan is a thriving democracy uh is that actually going to inspire us to go to war to defend it or is uh chip dependency going to inspire us to go to war to sort of defend right. it right and how important it is to maintain that. And so there's, they're stuck in the middle. You have the TSMC sort of perspective, which is a company wants to keep growing and to live forever, which means they should be diversifying outside of Taiwan. It's also a Taiwanese company. I believe the government is still a bit of a shareholder, but regardless, still has a lot of influence and, and sort of impact. And they want to preserve that aspect at the same time. They want to play nice with the U.S. because they they need the U.S. They need the U.S. as sort of protection sort of in the long run. So you have all these dynamics going on, which means there is a incentive and impetus within Taiwan and within the Taiwanese media to downplay and see this in Arizona not turn out well. Right. And so you, mm. you and so it, this dynamic, it, it's it's not quite the same as like it, it is a. There's just incentives you have to be careful about in sort of like parsing right. these stories, particularly the ones that come out of the Taiwanese media. And it was, Interesting. And even within TSMC, there's different factions. I mean, TSMC built in the U.S. like 25 years ago. It's been it was a kind of a disaster. It's the plant. The chip plant foundry is still operating. It's in Washington. But it's yeah, Morris Chang, when he's interviewed about it, he'll just tee off yeah. on how inefficient and unprofitable it is. He doesn't mince words talking about the U.S. No, he thinks all this is it. dumb. Right. Uh, and yeah. It, and economically speaking, it is dumb. But the reality is, is, you know, this is like sort of our basketball thing. There's stuff beyond, you know, sort of like true shooting for or whatever. Problem. There's yep. lots of stuff going on. Right. And I think one of the interesting dynamics with TSMC is. As they've shifted from being a trailing edge provider to being a a leading edge provider, which we've talked about, and the risks with that are astronomical. These these, these the the newest fabs cost like twenty billion plus. Uh, mm-hmm. They have been helped along by the largest customers, particularly Apple, which basically, you know, Apple fronted the money for them to move down this chain. And then Apple gets like the first year of chips, right? And then everyone else sort of benefits from that on the back end. The implication of that is despite the fact TSMC has had sort of monopoly on the leading edge for the last five to seven years, which I think they've under monetized, by the way, but they are increasingly dependent on just a couple of 
buyers. Like it's almost like a monopsony sort of situation. They need Apple just as much as Apple needs them. They need NVIDIA just as much as NVIDIA needs them. They're the ones with billions of dollars of CapEx at stake. That's being spent and has to be utilized. And the reality is, is that Apple and NVIDIA and AMD want fabs in the U.S., and so that is the most important dynamic here. That's more important than the there U.S. wanting go. fabs okay. there. It's that their biggest companies that are and essential. They want to see risk too. Absolutely, absolutely. And so that is why this is going is happening is continuing to happen is going to happen. I think is going to be sort of expanded. You know, you mentioned the sort of the rumor about this month, and you know, I think is and I think the hope on the U.S. side is. The more that TSMC builds in Arizona, all of these challenges will be overcome by sheer inertia. Like once you get big mm-hmm. enough, just the scale dynamics, you start get, it starts becoming more economically viable to do lower margin things like packaging uh, around that sort of area, to do things like testing, which all of which remain larger challenges because they're more labor intensive and they're lower margin. So you have less room to sort of play with. From the TSMC perspective, my critique of TSMC over the last five to seven years is they had them basically a monopoly and they underpriced. Yeah. They, they, they should have charged more money. And, that, and now Intel is going gung-ho. Maybe they're not going to fully catch up, but they're, they're going to be much more competitive than they were. Obviously, you know, Samsung is still in the game. And so their pricing power, I think, is going to decrease a bit over time. And that's a lot of money I think they left on the table that they're never going to, going to sort of get back. But the, uh, but, at the same time, what's one way they can increase price? They can give Apple and Nvidia what they want, which is fabs in the U.S. Yep. They're going to pay. For, and, and TSMC has been very consistent about that. Uh, it, the way they've always framed all the questions about the U.S. on like the earnings calls and stuff is, we are we are, we serve our customers. We're going to give our customers what we need, and obviously we will charge for that. And so that's basically what's happening. Wow. Okay. Well, I look forward to continuing to peel the onion on some of this. Uh, On the U.S. side, I've been following it in D.C. and following sort of the political narratives that have emerged over the last couple of years. And there are elements of what the government's done with the CHIPS Act funding that I don't love. Like, I think it's particularly stupid to incentivize chip companies to build fabs in the U.S. knowing that it's not economically optimal but you're doing it for national security purposes and then on the back end wait why, why do you think that's trying dumb? to uh, well no I, oh you I think, think that part's dumb. smart what's, well, what's the what's the number Sorry, i think I that's you. smart if 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 that's the logic i don't understand why there's this haggling process over profit sharing on the back end if it's truly a national security imperative to have some sort of fab manufacturing in the united states then let those companies, if they take the risk, let them, you know, have the upside on the on the other side. Uh, yeah, I agree. The, but the, the, this should be. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, I agree with you. It should be grants as opposed to like investments. Like that's not the government's job. Right. The government's job is to like spend money uneconomically because they're in a position to do so. The key thing in the in the broader sort of critique of the Chips Act is, and this gets to the point here. At the end of the day, these investments are so large. And the way for them to be economical is so dependent on the long run that it's all about demand. Like you can't, Mm -hmm. you can't sort of incentivize it from the supply side. You can't sort of build it and they will come. Like there has to be, you have to make sure there is real and sustainable long term sort of demand that's going to, to uphold this and keep this going. But, um, you know, I don't, I, I'm somewhat more optimistic about it. I think that. Like for I, they, their first grant was to Global Foundries, which I think is great. Like that's yeah. some of the stuff I'm worried about, like more trailing edge sort of stuff, right? Um, the the Intel one, you know, I think makes sense. Uh, this TSMC one is coming. Uh, I, I'm I'm somewhat optimistic. Uh, 